Gerald Salente again is our guest. I promise to go to your calls. Gabriel in Texas, you're a trooper. You have questions. I hope we have answers. Go ahead, Gabriel. Yeah, hi. Um, the first thing I wanted to kind of talk about was um, this whole NSA spying thing. I've been a kid of like the 90s and growing up with the Internet and learning all about it. And on the Internet, specific boards, we used to have a term for when the FBI used to show up at your house. We used to call it the party van. And a lot of us, a lot of the hacktivist groups and people that I know who have been on the Internet using it to expose the truth about government cover-ups and shitty emails that they send to each other. Sorry. I, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm going to have to let you go, bro. Uh, what was your question? Oh, oh, yeah. My question was this. Like, how do you feel like knowing that, like, this is a thing that's been happening for a really long time to us, the younger generation, and well, I mean, I mean, the government always practices unconstitutional stuff on young people, on 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 poor people, on minorities, people they think can't protect themselves. And then groups who think they're protected always think they're safe. Oh, that's just happened to them. And then it ends up happening to everybody. Uh, Gerald Salente, your take on that? Well, again, you know, it's just more of the same. You know, there's nothing new about it. They just go after anybody they can. And if they get they have the young hacktivists because they were the ones that were ahead of the game on on understanding what the the whole computer revolution was and and they grew up with it so they had more knowledge of it than most other people absolutely and i think the hacktivist community are some of the best people out there uh most of what they do is good exposing corruption and then usually it's some corporation or criminals that are doing bad things with hacking but hacking in and of itself uh you know how it was started was done from a liberty perspective People like Dr. Stallman and others. I mean, I just see good work out of the hackers. Happy hacking. Sergeant Bill, you're on the air with Gerald Salente and good old Alejandro Jones. Go ahead. How you doing, Alex? Good, sir. Uh, hello, Gerald. You're one of my favorite good fellas with rhythm. Yeah, say that again, sir. You, you're one of my favorite good fellas with <laughs> rhythm. <laughs> I see you were dancing around the issues. <laughs> uh, hey, Alex, you're, hey, Alex, you're right up there with uh, one of the great one's uh, Chuck Harder. I really respect what you do. By the way, we've been trying to get Chuck Harder on. I'm jealous of George Norrie. He was able to get him on last year, and we've been in contact with Chuck Harder to get, bring him on, talk about his book, give him credit for the icon he is. Whatever happened with Chuck Harder, uh, Chris? Well, we're just going to keep calling Chuck Harder. It's on his website, too. You know who Chuck Harder is? No, I don't. He was one of the early guys, got on like 300 stations at one time, even before Rush Limbaugh, and then kind of uh, faded through with him who we talked about the New World Order and stuff. Uh -huh. Just a really s splendid person. I never got the attention he needed, but in the Midwest and stuff, he was king. I mean, he was on over 300 radio stations. And, uh, you know, I, uh, he didn't really wake me up, but he woke up people that woke me up kind of. You know, it was, he just really is an amazing person. Anything else, sir? Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to salute you for exposing the crimes of vaccines and psychotropic drugs. Uh, since my son went through this nightmare for like three or four months and I got to see it up close and to talk to patients and, and these mental behavior units are killing fields. And I really appreciate what you're, you're doing. And um, Yeah, well the doctors and most of them know what the vaccines are doing, but they're mandated to do it outside of law, so they're gonna cover it up. But I mean, all the doctors I talk to know Gerald. And yeah, no, they, what they're doing also is these kids coming from broken families and socially troubled families, now they're not giving them any help at all other than psychotropic drugs, and that's no help at all. Well, it's basically, they might as well just give them lobotomies. That's what yeah, they're doing. Yeah. These drugs do that in all the shots. We'll be back with more calls with Gerald Salente. I'm Alex Jones, TrendsJournal.com, InfoWars.com. Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources. With over 30 years of experience in the precious metals business, I can tell you without a doubt, we are facing the most dangerous and volatile times, not just in the United States, but worldwide. Peace of mind is gold and silver. Now is the time to invest in gold. When it comes to bullion coins, our prices are competitive and the closest to melt. If it's numismatics you're looking for, we have some of the best deals out there. Visit MidasResources.com today or go to Infowars.com and click on the link 
to see our daily specials. Here's an example of one of our long-term specials we've been offering for more than a year. Two silver dollars from the turn of the last century, plus two powerful films, The Obama Deception and The American Dream. We also add in the book Dishonest Money, all for $72 and free shipping. The most trusted name in precious metals is Midas Resources. Call 1-800-686-2237 or go to Infowars.com. I'm Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. We are now only entering the edge of a global financial superstorm, the likes of which the planet has never seen. Here in the United States, the private Federal Reserve is giving more than $85 billion of taxpayer money a month to themselves and other offshore foreign banks. And the worst part is we have to pay the bank's interest on the money we give them. There is now a race between the global central bank mafia cartels to see who can devalue their country's currencies the fastest. We are already seeing big increases in inflation at the grocery store and the gas line. This will eventually lead to hyperinflation. More than a dozen top globalists like George Soros have been buying record amounts of gold while at the same time bad-mouthing it to the public. Don't just listen to what they say. Watch what they do. For more than 6,000 years of recorded human history, gold has been the ultimate hedge against uncertain times and inflation. Before investing in metals, it is important to do your own research and find a reputable company. Midas Resources has the highest Better Business Bureau rating of an A+. Unfortunately, very few precious metal companies can boast that. Midas Resources has assembled one of the most educated, researched, and professional teams of brokers in the industry. The evidence is overwhelming. In uncertain times, gold and silver is safe harbor. Now is the time to invest in gold. Call 800-686-2237 and Midas Resources will mail you 10 reasons to own gold absolutely free. No shipping. It's absolutely free. And finally, Ted Anderson wants to challenge you to find any deal that comes close to his two silver dollars at cost with free shipping with two free films and a book for $72. That's more than $160 value for $72 shipping included. Click the link at InfoWars.com to go to the MidasResources.com specials page. Brought to you by MidasResources.com and Ted Anderson. The trusted name in precious metals. Folks, we got Gerald Salente down here going native, drinking lime Tapa Chicos. Let me tell you the secret around here. The gringos drink the regular Tapa Chico, but guys that know what's good, we, uh, we drink the... Uh, the lime Tapa Chico's. Now, I mean, I didn't like these when I first drank them about 10 years ago. It's an acquired taste. But it's really like kind of strong mineral water. I'm addicted to these. By the way, they're not a sponsor. This is not product placement uh, here, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, look at the guys. I asked for some water, and they are just they're just lavishing us. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I'll just pour this water on top of my head. Uh, anyways, but I, I am product placing with uh, InfoWars team. Dot com for all the great vitamins and minerals and the rest of it. Uh, let's 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 go back to the call so they're all out of the way and then hit final trends with Gerald Salente here uh, on the live broadcast uh, today. Chad, you're on the air, sir. Welcome. You gonna say hello? Yes, sir. Thank you for hello. holding. Hi, Mr. Jones. How you doing today, sir? I'm good, brother. Uh, first things first. I know you hate this, but I got to do this, man. You saved my life, brother. Okay, two years ago. I was eating myself to an early heart attack. And because of your ministry, uh, talking about good health and good nutrition, I've lost almost 80 pounds, and I'm on my way to becoming a real info warrior. But my question for you, sir, I'm awake. I'm trying to wake my wife up. She's a TV head. My main question is, is it more important to get your temple in order and by your temple, I mean your body in order, or is it more important to just jump out into activism and take on a new world order headstrong? Okay, let me say this, and I'll put you on hold and come back to you for, for audio issues, but let me just be clear. People look at me, and I'm not the most photogenic person. I mean, when in person people say, man, you look a lot skinnier than you are on air. The camera adds weight, especially to certain people. But when I say, because I mismentioned InfoWars team and longevity a minute ago, not knowing the next caller was about to bring that up, um, I saw it with Aaron Dykes losing 90-something pounds. It's not even advertised as weight loss. I saw it with my wife having incredible results, Ted Anderson having incredible results with the stuff they've got for osteo things, not having to have a knee surgery because of it, osteo FX. 
I saw it with my mom, who's a triathlete, and my dad. I lost 40 pounds, then have gone back and forth because I still do a lot of unhealthy stuff. Just doing Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the Polymers Plus, the things at InfoWarsHealth.com, I've been able to work harder, longer. I've just never been a vitamin or mineral guy, so I'm always going on and off of it. My wife's like, hey, you've stopped. you stopped taking the essential fatty acids. you stopped. People that don't stop and do it. My dad, I was at his house. He's got a pool the other day, and I was like... You look like you're like 19, Dad. And I look like I'm a hippopotamus. No, actually, when I'm wearing swim trunks, I don't have that big of a belly. I, mean, I actually exercise a lot. I'm actually just more like, you know, a, a gorilla or something, a little bit stocky. But, but I think it goes hand in glove. I think you should get your family in order, your health in order, exercise, think about what's going on, 90% of your effort at first, 10% and go into city council, county commissioners getting involved. There's, you know, there's always room for all of it. Uh, and I think once you start getting your health a little bit more in order, and then you discover, wow, they always knew all this, but never told me, now it's your job to go out and warn other people and, and, and explain to them what you've discovered that, hey, you know, they didn't tell me I need 90 minerals and vitamins and essential uh, elements and things. They only told me I needed, you know, 20 or something. Uh, so it's just incredible the type of knowledge uh, in health that's out there. So be, just because I know it doesn't mean I've been putting it all uh, into function. Gerald, we were just talking about health uh, before the break there. We were talking about what big medicine offers. I mean, they have people everywhere with basically scurvy, rot holes in their skin, their teeth falling out because all they eat fast food with no real vitamin C. And the doctors won't tell them, hey, you got scurvy. They don't even teach doctors to look for scurvy. You know, the other one I would add into it is mental health in the sense that uh, now, I'm a, I meditate every day. I begin my day with meditation. By the way, you look—you're in great shape. Well, thank you. For 25. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I—I I don't know if you know this. I have an honorary doctorate in complementary medicine from the National University of Health Sciences, and the first book I worked on, 1986, was Natural Healing. So I would suggest that before you do anything, yes, you get your body in order and you get your mind in order. You know, everybody has this movie going on in their head. And what meditation does for me is tries to stop the movie. So when you stop the movie, then new thoughts can enter in. It's like a reset. Exactly. And, and you really never, it's very hard to quiet your mind. But, that, but, the, but in, in meditation, just the awareness that you're trying to quiet your mind and new thoughts are coming into it. When I swim, part of the meditation. about a half mile in, I go into like a zen, and, and, but I can't do it every time. Like this morning, I couldn't. By the end, I got real mad at about a mile and a half because yeah. I was trying to get all the stuff out of my head. And I couldn't do it. And that's why I, I begin my day meditation. You know, it's a, so I would just suggest that it's the mind, the body, and the spirit. Absolutely. But I was interrupting you. No, that's all. That's, that's it. That's it. <laughs> On that number. So, so it's all of it equal parts. Yeah. Yeah. Because and, if you start, you become the more of the activist because you're functioning at higher levels. So, so you agree with me, first get yourself in order. Exactly. I mean, you could dabble in, like you said. You know, you dabble around the edges, keep learning more about what's going on. But you have to be in shape. You know, the better shape you're in, the better, the better fight you're going to win. I have the problem, though, that when I really take all the vitamins and minerals and exercise like twice a day and eat healthy, I get so crazed and my brain works so and much. that's where the meditation comes in. Exactly. How do you handle being really and, alive? And that's what I'm saying is that's, where the, that's why I begin my day with the meditation. I'm as crazy as you are. You know, I never stop. And, and that's why the meditation, there's a book out, by the way, people ask me. They, they, there's no, I have a real good friend. His name is Alex McMullen, a Vietnam vet. And through an accident, not far from where I live, he became a quadriplegic. And this guy is a, a, a great guy. He tells me all the time, he said, man, I can never make it if I didn't meditate. And remember, this guy, this guy's a man's man, and now, you know, he's been in a wheelchair now for 20-something years. And meditation, what it does to you, it, again, it helps you stop the movie. And people say, well, how do you meditate? The book I recommend is from Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, he's a Vietnamese Buddhist. But you could do anything, you know, whether you're breathing and counting one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, because a lot of the Christians, and I'm a Christian, say, stay away from that. That's occultic. No, it's just a way to clear your brain out. That's all it People is. People made religions yeah, out of exactly. it. Exactly. They got gurus and all that other stuff. All the con but artistry. All it is is about trying to quiet your mind. Like you said, you got all this energy, all this stuff. Everybody has their movie. And everybody thinks their movie is the only movie in the world. The thing is to stop the movie. When you stop the movie, you have... 
then new thoughts enter in. Things that aren't important fade out. And it really brings back a balance in your body. Yeah, as soon as I can get in that mode, swimming, or it's usually when I'm exercising, or wake up in the middle of the night and sit on the couch and think, then I don't worry about fake enemies and people that make stuff up. I actually want to try to like help them and wake them up. It's, but when I'm running the daily you know, grind, I get really mad. Yeah, so again, that's why I begin my day with meditation. Yeah, so there's a really positive thing. And I mean, you know, the Bible talks about it just going to the still place. Exactly. I've been doing this for years, since the beginning of time. Again, and then you're like you pointed out, then they make a religion out of it. And people believe in this guru stuff. You know, the guru is you. And that's, that's it. It ends with you, begins with, you know, I get a kick out of these politicians. They always say, oh, you know, they're going to, what legacy will they leave behind? What legacy? You're nothing. They, what they find? King Richard III under a parking lot? Yeah. I guess so just to put it into perspective, you know, it's, you know, you don't count, man. Once you're dead, the you're only gone. way you count is building it's, new technology, new info, literature, and that love goes forward. That's and, it. and then you can commune with others even after you're gone. They're going to see what you did, and you're going to live on. That's the way it is. And 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 it's not an arrogant living on. No. It's that you care about humanity, you want to communicate into the future, and you want to do the best you can do while you're alive. And I, you know, I'm, I'm a. I, I was married a long time. I'm divorced a long time. I have no children. Everybody I love is essentially dead. So I'm not hanging on to anything. And for me, only speaking for myself, and you know the motto of the Trends Research Institute, think for yourself. To me, hell is taking that last breath and knowing that you weren't the person you said you were or could have been. That's exactly what I think. I just want to be real. I, I, I can't believe people hold on to their fakeness like it's a shield. I know. I know, so... I want to go to break and come back with more calls with you, Gerald. But, but again, they'll spin this that we're being anti a group or whatever. But you eloquently summed it up in about two minutes during a break of about an hour ago. What is behind the 24-7, every show, anti-male, anti-family, uh, ramming, you know, dogs humping on women in, in dog food commercials? What is behind this? Is it that... The elite are all whacked out and decadent. I mean, what is this about? Why are they at war with original males? All right, we'll talk about it when we get back. No, tell me now. Oh, you want to take it? Okay. We're going to break. Oh, We're gonna... oh, I understand. Okay, the first thing is, you know, I love these courses that they have in school. Women's studies. Skip this break, guys. Go ahead. How about men's studies? How about a course in men's studies? Can you imagine going $40,000 in debt for women's studies? Number two, they're making a big deal out of it as, a, as though it's positive that some 41% of the households are now run by single women. Or, and, and, and another equal number, about 41% of, the, of the, the new births have come from uh, unwed mothers. As though it's a wonderful thing that families are just being run, run by women. And just speaking for myself, I want the male energy. I believe, you know, all of a sudden, from the beginning of time, there was men and women and children, and now it's okay, it's just perfectly fine to have one parent run the household. Listen, with and government bureaucrats, with... Uh, let me, and, 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 yeah. and, and going on with this, and then they complain that... Well, the wages that women are getting are a lot lower. Okay, now put this all together now. You have 41% of the households or thereabouts have single women running the households. They're not making a lot of money. What do you think this kid or children are going to grow up like? And then you look at the real demographic in the real world. The real world where I come from. You know, a guy that grew up in the Bronx and Yonkers, you know, and still dabbles in those areas. You know what we're looking at? We're looking at 19, 18-year-old kids having kids that are out of their mind. They came from families that were out of their mind. Their mother's whacked out on meth. They don't know who their father is, and they're finding some value in themselves by having children. I just coming here to the show, a person I was talking to, his 25-year-old son is now involved with a 19-year-old girl from a crazy family. She already has a kid, now she's having another one. And, and now he's out of the picture. What is this family gonna grow up like? Look around what's happening. Look at the income levels, look at the people having children, and look what society is producing. All I will say in defense of everything that I just said, if it was working, you think we'd be in the problems that we have now?
Exactly. You're four times more likely to end up in prison or on drugs and to be in a low income wage if a father is not there when you're growing up. And they say, why are you attacking women? No, we're humans. This is how we yeah, operate. And women are women. We do things differently. Oh, and here's the other thing. Yeah. Every damn show out there, the guy is lucky to be able to tie his shoes without the kid telling him how. And by the way, the... Uh, the, the oh, and that's the other part of this, by the way, with this whole thing, that they all of a sudden... The kid, the particularly the parents, the, the mother most most of the time, all their kids are special and amazing. I'm a single guy. Go out with women and have you. Oh, my, 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 they're so, she's, they're so amazing. They're so special. They're kids. Get over it. They're kids. They're not special or amazing. They're little kids. Oh, you've got to make them special and amazing. You've got to be, make yourself special and amazing. What are they, splitting the atom? I mean, what, who of us that grew up at 20-something years old knew what the hell we were doing? But let's throw more at that. They, they have shows like the Fosters now where they say men are bad. They actually say it should be two women in the household. So it's bigotry towards men. And you see it in every show. And the, Hitler said, first you get the women, then you got the children, so follow the men. They know that women make 80% of the advertising purchases, you know, the, the off advertising. They're targeting women to break up the family to make the state the daddy, and only the state can be masculine. And you know why this country is going down? Because there are no men in it. Look at the people we got leading. No, no, us. the criminals are all super hyper aggressive no, no. men, and they know they're dominating, getting rid of the men so nobody opposes them. There are no men. Look in the Congress. Where's the men? Harry Reid? There's a man for you? Look, 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 Lindsey Graham? Lindsey Graham, yeah, there's a tough cat. Yo, keep going down the line. Bonner, Boner, what's his name? I mean, keep going. Look at Obama. Look, look, look at Obama. Look at Bush. Look at all of but them. But getting into Clinton. what's behind pushing the, the, the whole agenda on kids, uh, having the Muppets come out and be gay, what's behind that? I don't know what's behind it, but it's a whole decline. And again, the men have... Happened in Rome before it collapsed. I didn't know that, but I agree. I probably did. But again, look at, look at TV. The men are all stupid. And, and if you want to talk about discrimination, how come there are no men's studies in all these schools? Why are there just women's studies? Oh, and here's my favorite. If only the women were in control, everything would be great. Hey, you know who started the Libyan War? You know the three witches of Macbeth behind it? Try Hillary Clinton, Samantha Powers, and Susan Rice. Yeah. Oh, and those lovely other sweet little, those little, little fine little ladies like Margaret Thatcher and Dira Gandhi. Who's the lunatic they just threw out of uh, Australia over there? Gallard. And they put another lunatic in Rudd. But women, it's not a gender issue. It's a morality issue. Well, and look. They've, made, they've turned it into a gender I issue. I agree, but we are scientifically being attacked so that because they know families will stand up for each other. And that's why they're trying to get rid of the nuclear family and badmouth it. Austin is so trendy that we have three children. My wife has had women come over and tell her, you got too many kids. I mean, that's how weird these people are. Yeah. What would you say if somebody came up to you and got in your face? I said, mind your own business. Get the hell out of here. That's what I'd say. It's incredible. Get out of your mind. But, but <laughs> I mean, what do you, but how do they, the other rest of the world is not committing suicide and not, you know. Again, by the, look what condition we're in. If it was working so well, we'd be in much better shape. If we have an educational system that was worth anything, be it higher education or, or, or K to 12, you think the nation would be in the problems that But let me throw has? this out there. Men buy into this message they should be lazy and stupid and, and do what their wife tells them. I mean, I know a lot of men that literally just love this. I tell you, it's pathetic. And then they think I'm bad because I don't want to be a slave. Well, the same thing with me. You know, they'll, they'll say I'm a macho. Yeah, I'm a macho. You're a feminist. I'm a macho. So what? Yeah, but the difference <laughs> is, the difference is, is that those women, after, they always figure out what they actually want is a real man. The point is, well, these women don't want some guy following them like a baby elephant behind them. I mean, that is not what they're looking for. What if they have? Again, look, look at the leaders. And again, look around the world. What do you got? What do you have over there in England? Camera and I mean, come on, he's a little boy. What do we got over there in 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 in, in, uh, in in France, Hollande, Sarkozy. I mean, these guys aren't guys. they they you know. To me, the the last real man in the White House was 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 Eisenhower. 
Well, it is true that, I mean, where are the manly leaders that really just want to build a good society for people? Yeah, it's not a question about control. It's a question about men do what men do, women do what women do. And at one time, look, look what's going on. Look at the, look at the income gap in this country, not only between women and men, between all of us and them, the 1%. Well, they've done studies. Women are actually paid more than men on average. If you take the fact that they get pregnant, they want time off, they do that, which is fine. I mean, and, and then the feminist said, it's not good to, to raise your children. Uh, let the state do it as if it's a bad decision. Like, like, like my mother had several degrees, had been in business, been in newspapers. When she had me and then my sister later, she decided to be a homemaker. And that was important. And she would have women in Dallas say, you ought to be working. It's pathetic that you're at home. And she's like, what do you mean? I like this. Yeah, hey, check it out. You're, you're a little kid, you're born, and all of a sudden, six weeks old, you have a stranger taking care of you that's making no money at all. They're, ha they're hardly paid anything. I mean, I, if, if my mother, may her soul rest in peace, wasn't home, I would, I'd be a lunatic. I'd be really out of my mind by now. I mean, you know, the times... How that, dare your mother... And, and, and other family raise you. That is evil. Yeah, I, I mean, all the trouble I used to get into. Well, imagine having... breastfeeding, yeah. where the brain's actually developed. Did you know when they do this formula that's designed like 77% sugar when it's supposed to be like 20, 30%, and it's it's fried fructose corn syrup full of chemicals, the brains are about a third smaller, the, the CC size. They don't fill the skull cavity. I mean, think what we do to our kids so the women can go to work immediately. I know, again, a, a little infant comes out and now... Who's taking care of that kid? I mean, a stranger? I mean, to me, and again, you can write all the hate mail you want, I don't care. If anybody uh, you want to tell me I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, a misogynist. It's a lot of crap. See, no, no, no. I'm you shove saying, the kids in there. Yeah, yeah from Sh some stranger where the kid in the old days, from the beginning of civilization, the mother would be with the child. That's a conspiracy theory. Women never, never breast. They, they never were with the child. No, no. Next, they're going to say that the <laughs> women's breasts are <laughs> right. are there to be injected full of, uh, <laughs> right. you know, uh, uh, bisphenol A, and she's they're <laughs> there to get they're there to get cancer. <laughs> silicone. That's what they're there for to put more silicone into them. You didn't know babies drink silicone. <laughs> but really, I mean, all of us think about. Hey, it. chicken McNuggets have silicone in them. Why not? Think of what they're doing to the kids. They're raising children. And their strangers have their kids. I mean, my God, you know, I mean, I, I, I could not imagine. No, that's the state taking over. It, it's getting you used to it. And look at the people that they have taking care of them. You know, they, they're low-paid people. I'm sure they're well-intentioned. You know who the CPS really kids. wants is good families with good, healthy kids because they can sell them to the adoption rackets. And the average person getting a kid adopted doesn't even know where they came from. A lot of times, they're like, oh, this is a healthy little baby. Yeah, it was stolen from somebody for no reason. But if they're putting cigarettes out on kids and beating them, and it's a five-pound, you know, year-old baby, and they have cases of that starving to death with flies all over them, CPS will look in the crib and won't help them because they don't want the baby covered with flies. They want your healthy baby. Yeah. How sick is that? Pretty sick. <laughs> you know what? Maybe we're wrong. Maybe the government's actually good, Gerald. Yeah. No, again, this whole system to me, you know, it's, it's, um, it's just not working. Again, if it worked, we wouldn't be in the problems that we have. We're going to come back with a final segment with Gerald Salente and your calls. Chad, Alcatraz, Mike, Michael, Mike, and Keebler. All of you and more coming up as Gerald Salente samples the ambrosia of Topo Chico Live. Topo Chico. Brought to you by Infowars.com. Hey, I need to have them as a sponsor, actually. Send the sales guys after them. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show.